All right, well, I just wanted you to meet one of my co-inventors here. He's helping me make the uh, gasifier. And just thought I'd give him a peanut here. He enjoys those, obviously. Come here, little man. There you go. It's Mr. Teslonian back here again. Uh, we're going to take basically what you see here in front of you, and we're going to make this little truck right here, a Chevy Love, run on synthetic gas from wood. Uh, we're also going to precipitate out all of our liquids, uh, the crude oil, the bio crude, and our methanol producing products out of that smoke in the process and hopefully run that around our exhaust in the end, converting that over to another usable fuel and putting it into our engine. So you got the one big tall tank here as you can tell. That big tank is our material tube. And so we're going to just cut a top, uh, a blow by pressure relief top with a big spring in this. Uh, we're also going to cut the bottom of that tank and we're going to attach this tank cut off right here right to the bottom of it because this tank's smaller than that one. What this will do is that has a reduction point and that's actually where the paralysis is going to take place is right there. Uh, our pyrolysis process is going to actually take all that charcoal and then at the bottom of this tank instead of leaving it the same size I'm actually going to go underneath a little bit and make that slightly reduce more probably about an inch of reduction from the actual diameter of what you see uh, and that'll actually help us even reduce that charcoal compact it just a little more before it has to go through the smoke actually has to force itself through more of that charcoal which will help convert more of it into an appropriate syngas that we need a cleaner syngas hopefully with less tar production that tank welded onto the bottom of that one once it's done will sit inside of one of our barrels here uh, about halfway down the bottom of the reactor which will be this tank will sit down about halfway into this barrel and what that's going to do for us is give us a dead air space that the heat can travel around and that'll have this in the center of it preheating our material inside of it preheating this and keeping this nice and warm especially driving down the road taking a lot of our thermal energy off as the wind passes by so it'll be insulation in parts of this uh, and also air channels in parts of this so that the smoke can get to the top and get back out so let me get this started by cutting this tank and once I get this tank cut I'll show you about taking the measurements for this tank here welding the two together and getting our reactor and our material tube put together here and then into our so here let me show you something real quick on cutting your propane tanks first of all if you smell gas in them or even if you don't smell gas in a propane tank you should fill that tank all the way to the top full of water and make sure while you're cutting it that you're cutting in a water line the entire time so what we've done now is since we've got the top of that cut off we've centered it and set it on our larger tank here that's going to be our volume tank for our mass and our wood there, the larger gray one. This one's our reduction zone, our first of the reduction zones here. just want to really quickly go over something here with you on the design. If you notice right at the tip of my finger right here, there's this black line carved in here. Right there going all the way around. That's the actual true dimensions of our uh, reduction zone here. So what I'm actually going to have is a slight reduction from the tank even from what the actual size of the reduction zone is. And what that will allow me is a small air gap right here and a downspout area that's going to allow for where our air inputs are going to be right here to constantly keep clean. The majority of the time if we have a little bit of an overlap here there's a little chance that something's going to come in and go back upwards and stay there anyways. Uh, it may get in there originally but it won't stay there so it's going to make sure our air flow is a lot more reliable with a small amount of overlap. So I wanted to show you real quick where I was, uh, just not far from where I showed you before. The only difference is that I've tack weld and ground and I put the four inch hole here in the top. So let me go ahead and just show you what we've got going on here for a lid to fill with our material. And as you can see what it is, is actually the disc cut out of the other side. I made sure that it was larger than the hole we cut out of this side, which you can see there. So that's where we're going to fill our material into the reactor. It's going to go all the way down and finally burn down in the very bottom down there. I don't know how clear this is going to show up, but you should be able to see down in there a bit. As you can see, these welds have been fully completed all the way around, making sure that that's nice and sealed. There's no air leaks between the two of them. I've done a little bit of a test to make sure. Uh, and what you see here is a handle from the top of a propane tank. Looks just like this. I flattened out the loop over though. These were folded up on themselves. This one has actually an air gap around it. I don't like them to cover this. Uh, that one I could pound all the way closed. We've cut a much bigger hole in here. And to get that hole diameter, what I did 
is cut off the bottom ring that was already attached to the propane tank because whoever had originally welded it on there had set it off center so much that I couldn't use it. Uh, so I've cut it off and that's about the same size as the hole right here so we're reducing one more time. So three stages of reduction here. So I've now completed my weld on this side, walked it around and now I'm going to go ahead and form the other handle here and put it on right here. Uh, let me go ahead and do that real quick and I'll attach uh, another plate around this which I'll show you when we get to it and I'll also attach the other side of the bell up on top right here. Let me go ahead and grab that for a second show you what that's going to look like if it'll stay up there correctly. Okay, let me back off of that a bit. So there you go. That's what that's going to look like towards the very end. That's the end of the system right there. All right, folks, real quickly, I want to take you through some of the progress we've made. We finally sealed up and welded on our reverse bowl here, which will become the ash uh, reduction bowl setup. We've put an extra piece of steel, quarter inch all the way around uh, our reactor zone here, our, our reduction zone. And that's going to allow, because this gets so hot right here, that if, you know, there was a possibility that that steel that I had in there could have uh, melted down if there was ever an issue with this. This will give us a little more reinforcement for this zone. I can increase the temperature slightly in there and get a better reaction taking place. Uh, so you can see now, if I back up here, you can see that this is all ready to go. Uh, the next step here is to go ahead and attach our screen up here. Let me go ahead and fold this over so you can see what's inside of there. You notice I got one little offset hole from the uh, propane tank lid right here where my fingertip is. Uh, I'm going to have to cover that with a piece of steel. I don't think I want to leave an air gap like that. That will be an off pressure area right there. Uh, you'll notice in here that this actually reduces again. You'll see how far underneath my fingers are sticking. Uh, that's another reduction point. This hole right here is actually smaller than the inside diameter of our other reduction point. So it's even a finalized reduction point before it goes into the ash container. This should guarantee a pretty good burn, a clean gas out of the end of it. Uh, right now I'm going to go ahead and start marking my hole zones across about right here somewhere. I'm going to take some measurements, try to make sure I put it about the right distance from right here. And we're going to go ahead and throw our air inlets right here, uh, all the way around. You can see these holes that I've drilled in there. Uh, I put four holes so far. You can see these pieces of pipe already on two sides that I've cut and measured. They're threaded in at the moment. Uh, in fact, what I'll probably end up doing here is unthreading them now that I got my measurements the way I wanted it and welding it the other way around so I can always get to these, unthread the pieces. Uh, it makes it more manageable if you ever have to take it apart or clean it. We're going to have some wind in the background here, but I'm going to really quickly take you through what we've done. Uh, you see these two longer pieces here that are welded on. You can see right here, you can see a flange, you can see the rods are welded. Uh, what those do is stop that screen from ever opening any further than this. You see we've got the screen fully sized to the right size. I just built a couple hooked hinges over here on the back, welded them on as you can see. Just holds the screen in place. Uh, what these do is make sure that if we ever do have to use the shakers to make sure if there's anything that builds up on the screen, that it never can open up too far or fall out of place and that way you try to close it and it's always going to close right. Three of these pipes are now hooked up so I'm going to back up and show you how far those go down. That system now is going to mount inside of that barrel. So I'm going to cut a hole in the lid of the barrel, which I'm going to do while it's all clamped down and weld while it's clamped down. Uh, start out with tack weld so you don't warp that steel. That's going to be the main key here, is not warping the metal on the lid of that barrel. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start cutting barrel here and apply that reactor inside of the barrel. Uh, what this allows me, instead of going into the bottom of the barrel, this allows me easy access to my reactor head. Um, you know, so if I need to make any adaptions, add, take away, anything like that, all I have to do is pull now the, the rim off here, pull the whole reactor out, and I've just got a little collar sticking off instead of a whole barrel sticking over the thing and having to reach in there and try to drill with the barrel around it and all the rest of it just wasn't going to work. Uh, so I ended up doing it through the lid. I think that allows me a lot of maneuverability so if any changes need to be made to make the system even better uh, we have easy access for that. Alright real quickly here is an update take you through what we've gotten done. Uh, now we've got our hole cut in the top of the barrel uh, and then we've now set our whole reactor system all the way down in there and I left just so you can see it's it's just about right there the bottom of all that is right there that's gonna give us not a lot of distance between the bottom still a foot and something you know in the bottom for ash catch 
but that's going to give us just enough room so the heat has to travel all the way back up to the top of the barrel, help keep that uh, reactor nice and hot in there. A lot of this will actually be insulated around certain key areas, and I'll show you that as we get there. One of the key things about welding this is do little sections. Never go around and just try to weld this whole thing around on such thin steel to thick steel. You end up warping this really, really bad. So just take a little section, move all the way over to the other side, do another little section, do a, a four post and then go in between opposites and just work yourself around slowly doing little sections at a time in each spot and you won't overheat and warp this metal. Alright folks, one final thing here before I put it inside of the uh, barrel. You can see the cable going up right here. That cable goes to our grate screen and that'll actually be our gravity actuated grate screen uh, cable right here. Goes through a very fine hole in the lid to make sure there's almost zero air leak. And right now I just have some weight hanging on it. I got to put a hook on the tank, which we'll do once this is inside of the uh, barrel. But I wanted to show you just how that worked real quick. That was that final step inside of the reactor. And that'll allow us to dump anything. Like I said, those little prongs stop that grate from ever going any further. Very next step for this, now that I've got that done, is to go ahead and stick this down inside this barrel. Uh, we're going to cut a hole in the side with our hole saw, a two inch hole. I'm going to go ahead and weld a coupler on there. Uh, so we can draw our gas out. I'm going to attach a low volume uh, electric 12 volt fan up to that. And we're going to go ahead and fire up our reactor. Uh, that cable that goes down to the lower grate, here's what I've got. I've got a lock washer here, or a lock nut with a washer on it, and some bolts welded here. So you can pull the cable off, it goes through that small hole, and you can raise and lower and shake that grate if you ever need to. It's real easy to operate. It catches itself on those lower prongs. You'll notice there's two bolts. One's for really nice and tight, that's going to keep it right to the rigid point. And if I want a little bit of a bounce to it, I can add it down to here and that'll give a, just a little bit of play going down a road to allow for it to shake some of that off of there on its own. But there's our rigid mount. We'll just put the washer on there and this lock nut. And there you go, that's done and ready to go. Let me go ahead and take you up on top here, show you what we've got done. All right, so here's our hinge top. I've got a, a bad shadow here, so let me turn. It's fully hinged. We can rock it all the way back now. It's going to keep itself open. Uh, the only thing I'm going to do now is add a spring to this on the other side of that. So there's our lid ready to go. Seals nice and tight right down on top. I got to put a pressure system up here and then also our CO2 input from the exhaust into this upper hole here. That's the last piece to get done there, but for now I'm going to plug it. Uh, you can tell the seal's dang good right here, and the weight of it's really heavy, so it's going to keep itself sealed. Other than a light spring, just to help that for any bouncing down the road, this is ready to go. So we're basically a sealed chamber now. Uh, we've got our ash dump. We've got our air intake pipes. Uh, we've got everything ready to go except for our output pipe, and that's our next step. You notice I've got smoke rolling out of that fan there. I've loaded it with wood and let it run for about the last, uh, let's say, seven minutes or so. Right into the end of this thing. Let's see if we can get it to run from this side. There we go. We had it lit for a second there. It needs to cool this smoke a lot more. There we go. Notice the smoke disappeared. We've got a nice clean burn off. And then it came back. But if I can keep the lighter lit inside of it, we've got synthetic gas flare off there. There we go. Right there. You can see the smoke, how it disappears. You'll notice the thickness of that cloud when I'm not lighting it here. And then once again, we'll come up to it and light it, and you'll notice it's not there. It's actually a, a flame rolling out of there when I do that. So right now, there, the flame's actually burning and staying burnt. That's synthetic gas production at a good enough rate there. It went out. So you can tell the difference there when the, uh, the flame actually goes out between when it's not there. There's its lit again. All right, so our synthetic gas is producing really well. Uh, obviously, there it's lit, obviously, again. That's a big flame. 